کنفرانس در پارلمان انگلستان کمپ اشرف زمان اقدام جامعه بین المللی وظیفه حفاظت از ساکنان اشرف را بر عهده دارد پارلمان انگلستان سی و یک جانویه دو هزار و دوازده بارونس بوتروید عضو برجسته مجلس اعیان انگلستان ریاست مجلس عوام 1992 2000 پروفسور لورد تورنبرگ لورد کلارک بارونس ترنر بارونس هریس لورد مگینس دیوید ایمس مایک هنکاک مارک ویلیامز دکتر متیو اوفورد پروفسور گای گودوینگیل سر جفری بایندمن مالکوم پاولر سرهنگ وسلی مارتین دکتر محمد شیخلی کنفرانس در پارلمان انگلستان کم پشرف زمان اقدام جامعه بین المللی وظیفه حفاظت از ساکنان اشرف را بر عهده دارد پارلمان انگلستان سی و یک جانویه دو هزار و دوازده Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce myself. My name is Betty Boothroyd. I am a member of the House of Lords, and I sit on the independent crossbenchers in that house. And it is my great privilege today to welcome you all to this meeting in the Houses of Parliament at Westminster, and to thank you very much for your continuing support of this movement with so much persistence and vigor and for turning up on this very bitterly cold day. And I know some of you have come from quite a long way away. Now, we have a special panel today and a very powerful one too, since it's a cross-party panel from both sides, both houses of parliament and all sides in, that, in our houses. And joining us too are prominent lawyers who will illustrate the breaches that are taking place at Ashraf and at Camp, at Camp Liberty. And also we have a very special guest from the United States who I've just had the pleasure of meeting. Here he is on my left. Um, I like the price price, doesn't it, on my left? <laughs> Here he is on my left, uh, Colonel Wesley Martin. And he's uh, very welcome. <laughs> Colonel Martin is extremely knowledgeable about Camp Ashraf. He was responsible for the protection of the camp and there, and was there when the United States government pledged protection to the residents after they voluntarily handed over their means of self-protection in that hostile environment. And shortly, we shall, of course, be hearing from Colonel Martin. Now, my friends, the humanitarian situation in Ashraf and the suffering of the residents by the Iraqis who were supposed to protect them has a very long painful history which we are aware of. But by the end of last year, let's be honest, our hopes were raised somewhat. They were raised that finally a, a peaceful solution would come into fruition. And despite having used their own resources and energy and the imagination on turning that barren land into a livable city, the residents decided to leave their homes for the sake of and in the belief of obtaining a peaceful solution elsewhere. I think, you know, some of us ask ourselves, why did these people have to leave Ashraf to enable the United Nations to start its work in identifying each and every one of the 3,300 people there? And why couldn't they go through the usual United Nations refugee procedures without having to relocate inside Iraq? <laughs> 